Today I'll be showing you how to make isoborneal. There's two reasons I want to make this strange compound. Firstly, you can make some really nice smelling esters with it. And secondly, I have some camphor, which I've never done an experiment with before. Camphor is a ketone and I never reduced the ketone to an alcohol, so it's time to try this. The chemicals needed for this are quite simple. We use 99.8% methanol, camphor, sodium borohydrate, distilled water and a drying agent. Methanol is the driest alcohol I have and instead anhydrous ethanol could also be used. As an extraction solvent, MTBE will be used. To start off, a stirfish was dropped into a large round bottom flask. About 300 milliliters of methanol were then measured out. It's important to wear gloves and to work in a very well ventilated area while dealing with methanol because it is toxic. Camphor is this white solid with a very pleasant smell. We weighed out about 38.1 grams. It would have been better to add the methanol to the camphor to avoid splashing, but I did it the other way around. The camphor and methanol solution was chilled in the freezer overnight and the next day we set up an ice bath. Magnetic stirring was turned on and the sodium borohydrate was added over the course of about 20 minutes in small portions. Not a lot of heat was generated and this brings me to the conclusion that maybe chilling the methanol in the freezer overnight might have sufficed. Reflux was set up and under stirring the mixture was refluxed for half an hour. The bubbling nearly got out of control because of what I assume was hydrogen evolution. We got it under control by raising the flask. The rest of the reflux was very calm and no further incidents happened. The camphor is reduced by the sodium borohydride to mainly form isoborneol and also some borneol. Once the reaction was finished we needed to find a quick way to get the product out of the methanolic solution. A method that combines isolation and purification is to simply add the methanolic solution to ice water. The product should stretch out while water soluble contaminants will stay in solution. Here's what I mean by this. When the methanolic solution is added, all of this white stuff, which is our product, immediately crashed out. To separate the water containing water soluble contaminants from the product, a simple gravity filtration was performed. In the end, we were left with this huge chunk of product. The product still contains a lot of water and therefore we added some MTBE to dissolve the product while leaving the water behind. It was mesmerizing to watch how quickly the isoborneol dissolved in the ether. To dry the ether even further, anhydrous calcium chloride was added. It dissolved in the water and should get rid of some more water dissolved in the ether. It won't be perfect, but the amount of water that will stay behind in the ether will be minor. For the next step I had to be careful. I decanted over the ether layer while leaving behind calcium chloride solution. Some more ether was added and also decanted off. Time for the next step. I am going to evaporate off the ether and I'm not going to recover it because this ether has already been recycled once. Keep in mind ether is highly flammable and this is a fire hazard. I'm working in a very well ventilated area and there are no sources of ignition nearby. When most of the ether was gone, we were left with this white gooey substance. The hot plate was cranked up to 140 degrees celsius and I waited until the product was dry. To get rid of the last bit of ether, we blew air into the Erlmeyer flask. In the end we were left with this perfectly dry, white and fluffy powder. Keep in mind this is not pure isoborneal, but it also contains 14% of borneol. The lid was added and now we can see how much product we collected. 34 grams of product were collected and this corresponds to an 88.2% yield. Here we have some of our homemade isoborneal. Let's compare the smell of isoborneal with that of camphor. Holy guacamole, this shit still reeks like ether. It's not that bad, but you can still smell the MTBE. But it smells differently than camphor. Let me smell the big camphor bottle. Yeah, camphor has a really nice and strong smell. And the isoborneal smells vastly different. If I don't make an ester of isoborneal today, I'll likely never make one. Therefore, we are going to make the acetate ester. Because I'm lazy and I don't like to wait, I'm going to use acetyl chloride as an acetylation agent. About 2 milliliters of it were used, which is a huge overkill. I likely used way too much force, but unfortunately the cap of the bottle decided to break. Therefore I screwed on a new one. 
Acetyl chloride is pretty aggressive, and I assume that it could have damaged the plastic over time. To make the ester, all one has to do is to add the acetyl chloride to the isoborneal and to swirl it around. In the end, we were left with this clear liquid, and I decided to add distilled water to react with leftover acetyl chloride. The ester was extracted using MTBE, and it was then transferred to a piece of aluminium foil. I only wanted to know what the ester smells like and therefore I don't need to be precise and I don't need any further purification. The only way I can describe the smell of the ester is that it's somewhat similar to pine trees. I really like the smell and it was worth making the ester.